Hello students, welcome to the video on the architecture of 8085 microprocessor. In this video, I am going to demonstrate about the various functional blocks of 8085 microprocessor. Let's take a quick view into the architecture of 8085 microprocessor. In this diagram, you can see there are uh, so many blocks. So, let me start with the uh, general purpose register. So this is the uh, block which has the general purpose registers. We have about uh, 6 general purpose registers starting with B, C, D, E, H and L. And then we have uh, temporary registers by name W and EZ. Uh, followed with this, I uh, will I'll be discussing about the special purpose registers like stack pointer, program counter and then we have the accumulator, temporary register, flag flip flop register, instruction register. Followed with that, I will also be explaining about the uh, instruction decoder and mission cycle encoding block, the timing and control block, interrupt control block, serial I.O. block and finally the address buffer and data buffer. Let me start with the demonstration of power supply and clock block. This microprocessor is powered with a plus 5 volt uh, DC supply. This plus 5 volt pin is called as the VCC pin. And there is a ground pin which is represented as VSS. Moving on to the clock block. The clock block of 8085 microprocessor has got three pins. Uh, the first two pins are X1 and X2. These pins X1 and X2 are meant for triggering the inbuilt clock signal generator which is present inside the microprocessor. To excite the internal clock circuit of this 8085 microprocessor, we need to give clock signals via pin X1 and X2. This can be done with the help of crystal oscillator. As you can see in the circuit diagram, there is a crystal oscillator which is connected to pins X1 and X2. The second uh, option is we can use an LC oscillator. So, there is an L and C circuit, a parallel LC circuit which is driving the internal clock circuit. The third option is we can use an RC circuit. So, as you can see there is an R and C connected externally to pins X1 and X2. So, this will serve as an oscillator to excite the internal clock circuit. The third pin is called as the clock out pin C L K out. So, this clock out pin is used for triggering the external peripherals which are connected to this microprocessor. Uh, Let us say uh, you want to run uh, a peripheral or uh, a secondary processor as a slave to this device, then to synchronize all the clock signals in the system, we will be using this clock out pin. Moving further, the register structure of 8085 microprocessor is divided into two portions. First is the general purpose register. There are about 6 numbers of 8 bit general purpose registers. So, let us try to understand this with help of a small block diagram. On my block diagram, you can see there is a register called as B, C, D, E, H and L. These are 6 8 bit general purpose register which can be used for any arithmetic or logical operation. And on top of this, we have registers by name W and Z. These are the internal general purpose register. Okay? These are the internal registers. Meaning, they are used by the microprocessor for internal arithmetic or logical operations. The registers BC, DE, HL can be grouped as a pair to form a 16 bit register pair. Next is accumulator. Accumulator is a tri-state 8-bit register used for arithmetic, logical, load and store operations. Let me use an example to explain the purpose of this accumulator. Assume that we are going to do an addition operation. Let me write, let me write an instruction like add B. What happens when I execute this instruction is the contents of accumulator and the contents of B register will be added and this result will be stored in the accumulator. So, this is the purpose of accumulator in 8085 microprocessor. So, likewise when you try to perform logical operation or load and store operation similarly accumulator will be used. 
Next is flag register. Flag register is an 8 bit register. Out of this 8 bits, 5 bits are used by the microprocessor. In this flag register, the bits D5, D3, D1 are unassigned bits. So, they cannot be used either internally by the processor or externally by the programmer. Let us try to understand every bits of this flag register. I will start with D7. D7 is mentioned as capital S. Capital S means sign flag. This sign flag is used to refer the polarity of a number during arithmetic operation. Uh, let us take an example where you are trying to add two numbers. If the result is going to be a negative number, then that has to be indicated to the programmer, which can be done with the help of this sign flag bit. This sign flag bit will be equivalent to 0 if the result is a positive number. This bit will be equivalent to 1 if the result is a negative number. The next flag bit is D6. D6 is Z. Z is called as 0 flag. 0 flag is set when the ALU operation results in 0. When you try to do some arithmetic operation like uh, subtraction, let us take an example where we are going to subtract 9 minus 9, the result is 0. So, in this case, 0 flag will be set. Also, this flag will be set when any register value becomes 0 during increment or decrement operation. The next flag register is D4. D4 is AC, AC stands for auxiliary carry. Auxiliary carry flag is set when a carry bit is generated during BCD arithmetic operation. So, this uh, carry auxiliary carry is used internally by the 8085 microprocessor. The next sign bit is D2. D2 is capital P. Capital P means parity flag. Parity flag defines the parity of a binary number, whether the binary number is having even parity or odd parity. The next sign flag is D0. D0 is CY. CY stands for carry flag. This carry flag is set. This carry flag is set during arithmetic operations like addition or subtraction. So, whenever there is a carry or whenever there is a borrow, this carry flag is set. Next is arithmetic logic unit. Arithmetic logic unit is an 8-bit register which performs arithmetic and logical functions. It performs 8-bit addition, subtraction, 2-digit BCD addition, increment and decrement operation, logical operations like AND, OR, XOR, COMPARE, etc. So, right now on the screen you can see the circuit diagram of an arithmetic logic unit. The arithmetic logic unit is connected to accumulator and temporary register. So, these are the input registers to ALU. You can also see that a flag register is connected to ALU. So, flag register is associated with arithmetic logic unit to perform various arithmetic operation. So, it depends upon what type of task is run on this ALU. For example, if you are running an addition operation, there may be occurrence of carry. If you are running a subtraction operation, there may be occurrence of borrow or there may be uh, parity, uh, there may be occurrence of a negative number. So, in all those cases, the corresponding flag bit will be set to indicate that a particular event has occurred. Let us try to understand the concept of ALU with a sample instruction. Let us say you want to subtract a number. So, let me write an instruction like sub C. The meaning of this instruction is this will subtract the content of accumulator with the content of register C and the result will be stored in the accumulator. Now, what is this temporary register? The content which is stored in this general purpose register C will be loaded internally into the temporary register while we are executing this particular code and the result of this from the accumulator will be available in the data bus for the user. Next is instruction register. As of now, I have completed the explanation of what is an accumulator, a temporary register, a flag flip-flop register, arithmetic logic unit and this general purpose registers. 
Now moving to instruction register. Instruction register is an 8 bit register. It stores the current instruction which is executed in the microprocessor. So whenever I write an instruction on a microprocessor, the instruction gets stored in the read write memory. When I push the execute key on the single board 8085 microprocessor unit, the program gets loaded into the instruction register. Followed with this, we have a block called as instruction decoder and machine cycle encoding. So this block is responsible for decoding the instruction which is available in the instruction register. Then 8085 microprocessor has got 7 machine cycles. So machine cycles will help us understand what is the current state of operation which is happening inside the microprocessor. To name a few machine cycles, we have machine cycles dedicated for input output read, input output write, memory read and memory write. The machine cycle encoder will help us understand which machine cycle is currently executed. Next is program counter. As you can see on the block diagram, program counter is available along with the general purpose register. Program counter is a 16 bit register. It stores the address of next instruction. When we are executing a program on an 8085 microprocessor, the address of the next instruction to be executed will be available in this program counter. Next is stack pointer. Stack pointer is a 16 bit special purpose register. It is called as memory pointer. Stack pointer is a portion of RAM. The beginning of stack pointer is defined by a starting address of read write memory. It is also called as the memory pointer. It points to a memory location in a read write memory. This register gets decremented and incremented when I execute instructions like push and pop. The communication protocol followed in this stack pointer is last in first out. So this uh, stack pointer you can visualize like a tumbler. When you try to fill this tumbler with some data, the first data will get settled in the bottom of the tumbler. The last data will remain at the top of the tumbler. So when you try to retrieve the data from this tumbler, the last data will be popping out first, the first data will be popping out at the last. Next in pipeline is the incrementer and decrementer address latch. So this incrementer and decrementer address latch is a 16 bit uh, register, it's an hardware. This is used for incrementing and decrementing the program counter and stack pointer. The next block is timing and control block. 8085 microprocessor is a digital circuit, it's a synchronous sequential circuit. This timing and control block synchronizes all the operations with the system clock and this is helpful in generating appropriate control signals for communication with the peripherals. Let's take a close look into the timing and control block diagram. Let's start with the control signals. So we have a control signal called as RD, RD complement. This RD complement is responsible for giving the read signal to the memory. Next is we have the signal WR complement. This pin is responsible for generating a write control signal to the memory device. Similarly, we have ALE. When you try to read the address location from the lower order address pin, this signal will be quite helpful. Then we have the status signals like S0 and S1. They will indicate the user the current state of operation of this microprocessor. The next pin is the IO slash M complement. This is uh, input output slash memory pin. This IO and M complement pin will instruct the input output or the memory device about the mode of operation. Next is direct memory access. In my previous video on the pin diagram of 8085, I have explained in detail about what is direct memory access. You can uh, have a look at that video. The next pin is reset. This reset pin is used for resetting the microprocessor as well as for resetting the external connected peripherals. The next block is address buffer and data buffer. The address buffer and data buffer are tri-state buffers. The meaning of tri-state is these buffers will operate at 
three logic levels namely logic level 1 logic level 0 and log and logic level capital Z capital Z stands for high impedance let me draw the diagram of a tri-state buffer a tri-state buffer will be in the shape of triangle we have the input and the output ports and the third input pin is called as the control pin so based on the logic I feed into the control pin this buffer will be transferring data from the input side to the output side that is why this is called as tri-state buffer the address buffer is a tri-state unidirectional 8-bit buffer we have the address lines a8 to a15 under this context then the data slash address buffer so this also is a tri-state uh, buffer but here the data direction is bidirectional it's a bidirectional 8-bit buffer the address lines ad0 to ad7 they come under the scope of this particular buffer next block is interrupt block as you can see on the slide there are five hardware interrupts namely the rst 5.5 rst 6.5 and rst 7.5 followed with trap and inta inta complement that is the interrupt acknowledgement pin is used by the microprocessor to acknowledge an interrupt raised by an external peripheral the next block is serial io control block this serial io control block is having two pins namely sid sod sid stands for serial input data sod stands for serial output data this block is basically used for establishing communication between the microprocessor and the external peripherals with this we come to an end of this video i have explained about all the internal blocks of this 8085 microprocessor thank you